this was one of the first things Sarah wrote. Um, yeah. And it was just awful. Actually, no. I'm. I, you know what? I'm going to leave this in because this is true. This is not one of the first things. No, this is one of the first true. things she wrote when she managed to get some ability back in her left hand because she's left-handed. And then the next photograph you'll see she started. This was a little bit later when her writing was starting to get better. Again, she had to learn to speak. She had zero voice, which I'm going to show you in a video in a little bit Um uh, I'll explain that when I get to it. But this was what she wrote that she needed to find her voice. There was one Louise in ICU who Absolutely. made it clear that Sarah, it was a massive effort. Because you'll see I'm holding in my left hand a yellow sort of thing. You'll see it looks like a jumper for a car battery. That was a machine. If Sarah choked to death, I could suction out the thing that was killing her. On the back of Sarah's big comfy chair is oxygen. There's machines to keep her alive. And that took about an hour to get that stuff ready. It was an effort and a half. And Louise done it. it? She went on holiday. She came back and she went, it's been beautiful. Have you been out? And we were like, no, she can't go out. And she was like, she can go out. She's not, and she was kind of pissed off that nobody else had done it. So she took her out. And this was the photo, This was the first time Sarah had been out. And I want to say probably two weeks in a coma. Probably a month or a bit. Maybe a month. She hadn't been like seen sunlight or anything in a, in a month and a bit I'd say maybe maybe five weeks maybe five six weeks and this is outside the hospital she's got my sunglasses on and she's just getting some fresh air and yeah that's my mum and Louise took the photograph so Louise is almost a hundred percent guaranteed to never see this but if some weird fucking thing happens Louise thank you so much that day in particular was sort of like the turning point for Sarah because it just Gave her mental health a huge fucking boost. So anyway, that was her first time seeing daylight. And uh, it wasn't that sunny that day. But I keep I was calling her Neil for a while. Because remember the scene in The Matrix where he says, Why did my eyes hurt? And he says, Because you've never used them before. Her eyes were used to being in the ICU. So it was, sun, it was normal daylight. So hence why she's got the sunglasses on. But uh, that was a beautiful day to take and do that, you know. So this... Uh, now, I'll, yeah, two seconds, I'm going to go back, no, in fact, I'm just going to tell you as it is. When I showed you the picture of Sarah asking for tea, her hands were shaking, she couldn't hold a pen. And her left hand got better, but her right hand took a long time to get better. For some reason, it just wouldn't get better as quick as the other hand did. And you'll see in a second why the writing was so bad. Why, Sarah, so imagine try to write when your hand is doing this. This is good. It was much worse than that. So that's why she couldn't write. And this next thing you're going to see is uh, it's pretty cool, actually. This was when Sarah's legs started working again. So here you go, check this out. Lift your hand up. Why? Right, you ready, mommy? Here we go. Right, sure. Other one? <laughs> and then I go. <laughs> the lady in question has joined us. So that there, um, the sponges that were in Sarah's mouth were the only way she was allowed to take any water in at all and it was very minimal amounts of water. Um, but in that video, you'll see how swollen Sarah's feet were. But that was the first time she'd moved her legs, pr you know, properly in in a long, long, long time. And I think that the as you'll see now, the pick line has switched over. So it had been a bad couple of days. So, but it had been switched over. And at the very end of that that clip, you rewind it if you want. You'll hear her, pardon me, gargling. What sounds like she's got something in her throat. That's what she was like the whole time. That's what just didn't get any better for the longest time was the coughing. And not having the strength to cough the noise up yeah. because of the CPR. The damage. They didn't break any ribs. But the bruising, the damage, just everything. You know, it was really fucking difficult. And then this is still in ICU before she got moved to another, another room. So the next thing you're going to see is Sarah. I missed the start. They forgot to come and get me. 
So I missed the start of Sarah's first stand. They're using what they call an assisted machine, an electric machine. They put a, like a belt around your waist, they attach it to the machine, and the machine can either do 100% of the lifting, they can set the machine to difficulty levels, like in a gym where if it's at 100%, it literally just drags you off your chair. If it's at 0%, it does nothing and you have to stand up. So if I remember right, to the doctors, to the physio's surprise, the machine was set quite low, maybe 80%. So Sarah was actually doing some standing here, as you'll see now. Right, see so if you can lift your chest, shoulders back a bit. Keep it down a little bit. Yep, keep standing up nice and tall. Right. Smile. Say cheese. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, that was Sarah's first stand, uh, which was a huge big deal for it just to stand up was incredible. Now, the next thing you're going to see is a video of Sarah speaking. And I love this video because if you've heard her speaking now, I'll get her to speak sometime before this video's over. I'll get her to say something to the camera again and you'll see she's left with a little lisp, which might go away, it might not. Personally, I quite like it. It's super fucking it's cute. It's like Jonathan Ross. It's like Jonathan Ross. She can say ours if she takes her time. But to say like, you know what? Do you want to just do it now? Okay. Right, I'm going to turn the camera to show you Sarah in a second. Right, you ready? And I'm going to ask her to say the word druid. Okay? And you'll see what she's left with. Here we go. Druid. Oh, that was all right. That wasn't bad. What's the other word? Uh, Adventurer. Adventurer. Bastard, it's not working. It's that's pretty good. It's because I'm I've got mayor um I've been practicing there. Did you hear it? Pra practicing. So she can see but she, she's left with a wee lisp. But at this point you're gonna see now we thought this was fucking amazing. And it's super cute. And I'm gonna put that. words up and uh, Sorry, and I'm going to interrupt again my, my own cell, and I'm sorry everything's filmed up and down the way. Again, I didn't have YouTube videos in mind when I filmed all of this. This was for us, so I was just filming up and down the way. But I'm going to put up subtitles, if you will, because some of you might not understand what Sarah's saying. It's, I mean, it's not like it's in Welsh, but anyway, this was Sarah explaining how her day had went, okay? So uh, this was for my mum. We filmed this for mum. But this is Sarah explaining... This particular day, what had happened, okay? So, here you go. Go ahead. Well, today was a good day. I stood up three times. Uh, I stand ten seconds. And he just took a kiss. And then, I had steps from the glass. And I had two spoonfuls to yoga. And I said that. And I've been told of what a strange mouth. So, we're running. Bye bye. <laughs> I love that video I've probably watched that video more times Than I've watched The Breakfast Club Which is a lot of fucking times But uh, So the sips for the glass thing it Was a big deal Because the sponges that she was using mm. She used them that often At one day she just was like Don't fucking point that sponge at me I'm going to throw it But to take a sip She had to if you can, it's a bit of a faff, but if you if you got anything next to you to take a drink or go away and get a cup, take a drink. It doesn't just roll down the back of your throat. That's how you choke to death. Your muscles in your throat push the water back, your tongue moves it and you swallow it. If you can't do that, it just runs down and you might think it's going well. And for five, six days, you'll think this is going great. And on the seventh day, that's when you realise that the water's been gone down the left tube it's filled up your lungs and you're on death's door. So it's really, really, I can't describe enough how back to basics it was for Sarah to learn these things. So to take a sip from a cup and do it right with the speech and language lady whose name was Alexis, who, by the way, is a fucking legend, an absolute legend. It was a big, big deal, a big, big deal. And like she say, she stood up for at least 10 seconds and then 20 seconds and then they told her she had a very odd mouth because it was a, a high, 
the mouth, the roof, or what we say, the mouth roof, the roof of our mouth is way high up, like really, I don't know if deep is the word you describe for someone that goes up, but it goes up really, really high. Turns out my mum's got the same thing, which is weird, but they, they'd never seen that for a long time. So the inside of your mouth's really fucking weird. So they told her she had a weird mouth and, but yeah, she was starting to kick ass, like she says at the very end. So uh, this was around about the end of her time on uh, ICU. Um, and not long after that video, which you'll see now, we got moved to Ward 107. And again, I want to give a shout because in ICU, you are one nurse to one patient, sometimes two nurses to one patient. And then they give you a statistic that you might be going doing on Sunday or it might be Monday. Okay, cool. Just to make you aware, it's one nurse to roughly 12 patients. Mm -hmm. And that's a fucking huge shock, a fright. And it's like some sort of Stockholm Syndrome. Fair enough, you died and you had a coma and you had all this stuff wrong with you, but you've been in that place for a month and a half. A month, month and a half. You're confident with the, the, nurses, the nurses in there. If you need anything, they're right by you. They don't leave you. You get used to it. And then all of a sudden that's ripped away from you and it's back to change. So we went down to view there and it was a bit worrying, but then we bumped into a guy there called Lawrence, who's one of the head nurses, and he was lovely. And uh, yeah, this is Sarah's room. The, again, this was filmed, for, you'll hear me saying mammy or mum. Um, I call my mum mum, Sarah calls my mum mammy because it's her mother-in-law. But this was a video we filmed for my mum to show her the room that Sarah had been moved into. Okay, so you'll see that now. So, that's her there. Her door's there. A wee telly there. 30 quid for three days. That's what we've paid for now. So we'll see what the rest of the time brings. That's our bathroom. That's her thing, she's got a wee window there. And that's it. So that was the room. Um, and I don't know if I've mentioned it, I've mentioned it in other videos, um, but Hawkeye's of you will notice that Sarah uh, has lost some hair. She's lost quite a bit hair. Um, a big, massive patch on the top and the back of her head. That was due to trauma. They gave us a sheet of paper that explained exactly what happened. And as you can imagine, and I'm not being sexist, but for women more so, it was a big deal. There was many days of tears. There was many days of days of inconsolability. But I hasten to say that she's sort of coming to terms with it now. For the longest time, it was... Uh, she's crying now because it's a, it's a shocker. It's a big fucking deal. And for the longest time, my mum and I would say, it'll grow back, it'll grow back. And everybody would say, it'll grow back. But her head was so smooth that we were beginning to think, I don't know if it is. And it will, because one day we were sitting and it was quite quiet and Sarah went, oh, and I was like, what the fuck? And she's like, spikes. And I'm like, what? And she felt spikes and the hair is growing back. Uh, it is growing back. So it'll take a long time. I know that and she knows that, but it will grow back. So the next stuff you're going to see is a couple of photographs of... Uh, <laughs> the next photograph is sometimes Sarah's head would get cold. And I'm only laughing because you'll see why in a minute. Is sometimes her head would get cold. So this guy came up with a fucking great idea, as you'll see now. When Sarah was told that she could start eating certain things normally... One of the things that she'd been craving from, like, uh, uh, very near the beginning was a calippo, a specific flavoured calippo. Now, if any of you have been to hospitals, you know that you can't exactly order stuff. It's not like fucking, you know, Amazon or Asda. But I did find a calippo downstairs in the uh, uh, Martin Spencer's thing. So, uh, yeah, you'll see why in a little second that I mentioned a calippo. So, next video you're going to see is uh, filmed by my mum. And it's... You know what? I'm just going to show you what it is. It's self-explanatory. But trust me, this was a big deal. This was a huge big deal. So, watch this. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. She's had her CP this morning already. She ran with your sugar now. <laughs> no. no, CT scan. Oh, she's had the CT ah. scan. She got any results? Nah, I got that lady just talking about it. Yeah. All right. Oh my god. She stuck here yesterday. That's good, isn't it? I have no idea. Never walked with you. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Wait, one second. Just for the chair. My goodness. <laughs> so, I told you there was tears. Uh, that's when I stopped filming because, again, some moments are just for me and Sarah and the people that were there. But after that, uh, we decided that a wee treat would be in order. So we went back out to visit the ducks and the crows and stuff. So you'll see that again now. It's not there, further down. Come on there, it's right there. That's, oh, you got the extra, well done. Are you going to try it? Ah! <laughs> yeah, greedy shite. you got a fucking mouth fit. You're going to drop that when you jump. So next up, once Sarah had conquered the, the shuffling and the walking, was to, as you'll notice in that last bit there, her uh, NG tube was out by this point, which means she wasn't getting any of the, the horrible protein liquid food in her stomach and stuff. It was, the NG tube was out. The stuff in her neck was all good, so that was great. So she was eating normal, well, as normal as she could, yeah. but she was eating normal food, to put it that way. Um, and the next thing to work on was more PT, but specifically steps. And I don't mean like spiral staircases or, you know, just a step, for example, as you'll see in a little second, because obviously, when I'm saying these things out loud, it sounds so obvious, but we just... When you're in it, you don't, you just take certain things for granted. Like, of course we've got fucking stairs in the house. Of course she's not walked up a step for two months. You know, can she do it? So this was uh, the first time Sarah attempted to walk up a little step, as you'll see. Grip it while you're doing the steps. It's strongly got first. Oh, there we go. So, uh, slight error. That was not the first time she'd walked over that step because the first time she'd walked over that little step, there was a huge like tears and joys and the, the two ladies there gave her a hug and it, I gave her a hug and she came right to the end and it was like a stand-up hug for us. It was beautiful. But uh, I didn't put that in because that was a private moment as such. But that wasn't the first time. That was just another time. So the next thing you'll see is, I think this might be, and I should probably watch it first, but we'll find it together. This is one of the, either the first or the second time Sarah attempted stairs. As in opposed to a step, you'll see what I mean. At the end, it's the first time. If she cries at the end, it's the first time. I think it's the first time. You'll see. Let's see. Just 
start off. Oh, how do I do that? So that's a good, stronger leg on the way up. Okay, that's it. And do I just bring the weak leg up to that step? Uh-huh. Right. How was that? Steeper. It is much steeper, but look at you. Just take your time. So, before it goes any further, this is definitely the first time she walked up the stairs. Um, I've cheated and looked ahead. There is tears. Prepare yourself. But this is the first time she walked up the stairs. Um, you'll see Sarah looks like she's got a big, massive stomach, swelling, operation, all that sort of stuff. You'll see Louise on the left is holding the, for want of a better term, a bag of piss. It's the catheter. You have to have a catheter. And if you can't go to the bathroom, you have to go to the catheter. Yeah, use the catheter. And the thing you can see hanging out by Sarah's knee is a drain. Now, the drain was put in. I've got a photograph of it, but I need to check the photograph and ask Sarah, because it's quite close to her private, so but we'll see. You might, but I can describe it. Basically, she had pockets of infection in her stomach. Um, and I should probably tell you, because I don't think I've mentioned it, actually. I've came all this far. But the thing that killed Sarah was sepsis. Now, what happened when the bowel burst poo leaked from the bowel into everywhere all all her stomach or all, all her organs and that's sepsis now sepsis is a killer um look it up if you're going to google image it just be careful it's it's really dangerous you lose limbs you lose body you lose life compton wait um and as Sarah was getting better and better and better. They had to put a drain in to get the last little pockets of infection that weren't coming out. So basically what it is is a drain. It's they, they, they bore a hole in her with a really long needle, like Pulp Fiction, but not as, not as quick. They put it all the way in. They stitch it into the skin. Compton, wait. They stitch it into the skin and then there's a drain bag and it gets any poison coming out. So that's what you can see hanging out on the right-hand side. Uh, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a few minutes, all right? But um, this is Sarah again turning around at the top of the stairs. Here we go. Should I go just get you hold on You, that was really <laughs> You're going to get the <laughs> So the next photographs you're going to see, uh, I don't know why I said photographs there, are uh, a photograph of Sarah's swollen hands. And these are just... Again, these are not as in to complain. These are just side effects of what was happening. Sarah's got, um, I call it shy, but they're bouncing veins. You can tie a tourniquet around the upper arm, the vein pops out, and then two seconds later it just goes shoop and disappears. It can be a real nightmare. So when they find a strong vein for to put a cannula in to give her medicine or take blood or whatever, they tended to keep it in some longer than they should have done because it's so hard to get another one in. So as a result, sometimes she'd get really swollen. So her hands are swollen. And this one here in her, in her uh, elbow ditch was particularly swollen. Um, and that was just, it's just unfortunate. It was a real bummer, but it was unfortunate. So you'll see them. So, that, uh, if you go back and look at the photograph again, okay, 
about an inch and a half, two inches away from the dressing, the white dressing that's underneath the plastic, you'll see stitching. What's black, it's, it's thread. It's like the stitching wrapped around the tube. Now, I, I know I said I wasn't going to tell you about all the complaint stuff, but this is one of the bigger ones. Um, that stitching is supposed to be, that black stitching is supposed to be underneath that white covering and it's supposed to be stitched into the skin, keeping that tube in place. If that tube's not in place, it's causing severe pain and it's not draining the infection. A doctor came in, didn't introduce himself, said I had a private room because of the risky infection. Um, doctor comes in, didn't introduce himself, normal clothes, so you know they're quite high up. Came in, I'm here to have a look at your drain. Okay, cool. He yanked the drain, Sarah screamed, he went, oh, what's wrong? Oh, you've yanked it. And he looked at it and he went, oh, okay. And then he left. So what happened in that yank was he pulled the drain that far out. He ripped the stitching out of her leg, uh, out of her skin and pulled the drain. We'll say for, to be, con to be conservative, we'll say two inches out of her skin away from where it should be. Now, there's a few things with that, but we'll focus on the main things, okay? We'll, we'll not curse them out or we'll not do anything like that. that that's going to get dealt with. But two and fairly important things. One, he's ripping stitches out, which you shouldn't be fucking... That's not what you're supposed to do, okay? There is a technique called backing out, where, where you release the stitches, you pull it, you restitch it. You release the stitches, so it gradually comes out. Another surgeon tried to say that's what he was doing. That's not what he was doing. He ripped it. I think... In his defence, what happened was he thought the tube cable was longer. But he should know to check before you fucking pull it. Do you know what I mean? The second thing is, not only did he rip it out and cause her to scream and be in pain for a long time after that, a long, long time. Even still to this day, like over two weeks since that came out, she's still in pain with that. But the other thing, that is now to inside her stomach is now at least two inches away from where it's supposed to be. So that then was no longer draining out the poison. Do you know what I mean? If it's supposed to be here and this guy's pulled it down to here, it's no longer draining the pus from up here. So when they were flushing it, the water was just going inside bits where it's not supposed to be, causing her pain, cramps, like uh, if you're a, a woman and you're watching this, like severe period pain cramps. If you're a man, we'll never understand that, but just severe cramps. And it stayed like that for, I think, four days? And they took her for a scan, and then, we're just going to take the drain out now. It's, it's looking not to eye. Well, you might as fucking, because it's not doing its job. So that was, uh, that was not great. That was not great at all. So, we've come to the part of the video that will either get the video flagged as graphic and I'll need to edit it and put the video up again or it won't. But I've just been speaking to Sarah there and this, I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over and but, but this is real life. This is what happened. This is what happens on a daily basis. This could happen to somebody you love. This could happen to you. This could happen to me. This is what happens every day to somebody. So, Sarah has a vac machine. Now, what that is, is when they operated on her the first time, she's had three separate operations. But the big, big, big one, they basically, from the navel, eh, for the top of the, the, the base of the pubis, no, the top of the pubic sort of triangle area, they come up, they go around your belly button, the ones I've seen, they always seem to go the same way, up and into the left. But anyway, they go up and round your belly button and then higher up and they open you right up. And effectively, what they do, and not every time, but we've seen it in a, in a show as well, they clean out all your insides because it's covered in poo. Sometimes they take loads of your intestines and your organs and they put them in a bag inside your body. They clean it and then, you know, they try and get all the infection out. But regardless of what happens in there, 
they leave, they stitch you up a bit and then they leave a wound open and they attach a back dressing to it. So they put a protective sheet on the hole because it's effectively a giant fucking hole in your stomach, okay? They put a sheet on it, they put a sponge on it, they put more sheets on it, they cut a hole in the sheet, the top sheet, so they put another sheet on top which is connected to the machine. The machine sucks out any imperfections, it gets filtered through the sponge, into the machine, you change the machine and that gets changed every four days. It's a vac dressing. Now, I debated whether I should put this in and I'm gonna because it's real. If you don't want to see this, skip forward now. This is very graphic, okay? I'll describe it to you before I show you and you can make your mind up. This is a hole in Sarah's lower stomach below the belly button. This photograph was once it had been healing a little bit. So this is not as big as it was, okay? But it's, I'm not going to zoom in, but if I was to zoom in right in with a camera, you would be able to see inside Sarah's stomach. Inside, no, inside her stomach, sorry. Inside to the outside of her stomach, if you know what I mean. Inside her abdomen. Intestines, bowel. It's, it's a big fucking hole in her stomach. It's really graphic. Um, and I'm warning you, okay, and I, I'm being over dramatic for a reason. It's it's graphic, okay, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get flagged for it. So I'll try, but if if I get flagged for it, and I'll leave this part in, but I'll just blur it out or something, okay. But this is what Sarah had. It's much, much, much smaller now. It's almost healed now. But what the vac does as well is it sucks all the imperfections, but it draws the skin together so it heals. But you'll see, okay? So I have warned you. I've spent the last four minutes, according to my phone, warning you. So please, I'm warning you one more time. It's very graphic. And this is what Sarah has. Again, it's much smaller than this now, but this was in the middle of it healing, okay? So here we go. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty graphic, I, I, I told you. But again, it's real, it's real life. This is what happened. This is what happened. This is what's happening, okay? Um, so again, it's much smaller. It gets changed every four days. Uh, we go to either surgery or we go to the hospital or we go somewhere and they, they change the dress and they change everything they get a clean out and everything every four days and it's healing really well it's really really healing well the skin there was kind of red which is pretty good it's getting a blood supply but the skin now is really pink it's really really healing well um, in fact i've got a, a photograph i'll show you now of it when it's uh got the dressing and stuff on it right oh, here we go have a look at this So yeah, that's what it looks like when it's got the dressing on it. Um, and then obviously that gets changed and you'll see that the, it gets filtered through into this wee machine and that sort of stuff. So, And that brings us to pretty much where we're at now. Uh, again, I've skipped a lot, but I didn't think I need to give you everything. I just wanted to make people aware how serious it was. And again, really, this is... If something happens to you or one of your family members, you might be thinking, I've got no idea what to expect. Now you might have some, and I'm not saying that this is what's, if something does happen, even if, the, like, for example, somebody you know is bowel bursts, what I'm showing you now, that might not necessarily be the things, but you'll have some rough idea. And also, if I'm honest with you, I wanted to show everybody how fucking horrible it's been and how proud I am of my wife. And I tell her that all the time. I'm so proud. She never once... She had days where she cried all day. She got frustrated. She had panic attacks. She got angry. She got sad. But she never once gave up. And it would have been so understandable. And so easy. So easy to just say, nope. And one thing I forgot. Right in the middle of it. You know the bit where she was climbing up the steps? That was going so well. And then we had something to eat in the hospital together from, from downstairs. 
in the canteen and Sarah got sick. And that was for one day or two days. And that set her back a, a couple of days, which is fine, fair enough. What she had was too rich for her. But the oh. the poison that was in her stomach, the sepsis, it, it, it stopped being sepsis and it was just now poison in the stomach after a while. Um, She had quite a, not super, super rare, but an, a very unusual strand of infection in her stomach that antibiotics weren't dealing with. They just weren't touching it. So they had to put her on a concoction of two other antibiotics, three other antibiotics. And side effects of any antibiotics can be sickness, vomiting. These ones, for seven full days, Sarah ate nothing, kept no water down, was consistently sick, and that was the day after that video part where you seen her coming up and coming down the steps and crying mate, with joy because things were going so well, um, which led to another thing she had to get in her arm, which was more anti-sickness, more pain, and it was seven days of not being able to eat or drink. And, and I don't mean being sick every five or six hours. I mean being sick pretty much constantly. And you know the feeling, and I asked her, that's the only reason I can speak on her behalf, but you know the feeling maybe 30 seconds to 10 seconds before you throw up, that let that feeling 24 hours a day for seven days straight. So that set her back massively, massively. Um, but we're home. She's walking. I'll show you some footage of her walking. Not now because I'm going to film it maybe tomorrow or something. Um, and yeah, things have come so, so, so far. And it's just been, it's been a long fucking road. It's been a hell of a journey for Sarah. It's been, it's been right. massive. And you. Uh, and me, she says. I, I, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, I've got my wife back. And that's it. So now what I'm going to do, the next thing you'll see is Sarah walking. We've got some various aid stuff for the house. Like a really, really, really thick toilet seat. The idea is if you're not as low down, it's not as difficult to get up. It's not being out the packet because Sarah's got so much determination. She's not needed it. We've got three walkers, Zimmer frames, as you maybe know them as. The the, the typical metal, grey metal Zimmer frames with two bits at the back and two wheels at the front. We've got given one for downstairs, one for upstairs, and we've got the what we call the off-road one for outside with a little seat on it that she can sit and have a rest. We're already handing back the toilet seat and the, the Zimmers because she's just no needing the in-house Zimmer. She's getting the boots so fucking good. The outside one she'll need for... Well, we don't know for how much longer. It could be two weeks. It could be a month. We don't know. But she'll be finished with it when she's finished with it and we hand it back. But how far she's come is unbelievable. So you'll see her walking. You know what? I'll show you her walking now and I'll show you show you the... Actually, what I'll do is I'll show you... When she comes back for the bathroom, she's just away for a wee, I'm going to show you the vac machine that's attached to the, the wound because I forgot to show you that, but... Yeah, we've come a long, long way. So give me two seconds and I'll sign off this video in a minute. But for now, I'm going to show you the vac machine that's attached to her tummy. Okay, here we go. Why is the light not went on? So, this is attached to Sarah's tummy. And this is the machine here. So it tells her various stuff it tells you the speed it tells you how much it's day in the day and all that sort of stuff and in here this but i'll not show you it but in here uh, i might be able to show you from that angle is the canister that uh sucks out all the 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 poisons and the imperfections and helps it help and, and the imp impurities and helps it sort of join back together so that's the last thing she's got to cart about with her until Maybe another week or two will stand in it. Might might they might just pack that wound and then go back to without that. that. Yeah, we found it the other day there that uh, they like to keep you on that as long as possible because uh, it helps you know bring it close together as as quick as possible. But also when they stop using that suction thing and they pack it, it feels wet all the time. They said so. Sarah's not looking forward to that. But uh, 
Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Like I say, the next thing I'll show you will be Sarah walking outside with her off-roader, as I call it, with a little chair. And that's pretty much it. What I'm going to be doing in future videos is give you slight updates as to things improving, but um, we just kind of believe how far she's come and how well things are going now. So I guess that's the end. I'm not quite sure how to finish the video, but that's it. That's... The majority, minus some bits here and there, um, of Sarah's journey and what happened. And that was the 16th of April. So that has been, it was 77 days in. So it's now, what is that? 77, 86, no, 89 days, 88 days ago. Yeah, 88 days ago. And it, it, I mean, you know, I think people can tell by the, the little weekly updates that I was putting up just to inform people how she was doing, how I looked, how my face was, how it, how it was. Maybe in the future, I'll make a video explaining how I felt, but I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted this to be about Sarah's strength and what happened to her and, you know. So maybe in the future, but then again, maybe not. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just dwell on what happened in this video and then that's it but i'll certainly keep everybody up to date but the next video in this on this channel will be a video of a tattoo which is weird because at one point i didn't know if i was ever going to tattoo again um because obviously i didn't know what was going to happen so but the next video will be a tattoo so that'll be weird but thank you very much for watching i'm sorry if it was a bit much to see the wound and stuff like that but again I did forewarn you and it's just real. That's what we've been dealing with. So thanks for all the messages of support for everybody. Thanks to everybody that bought a painting. Um, actually, during this, I took on commissions. Once I realised Sarah was going to make it, if you like, um, I took on commissions. So what I'll do in this video is put in, in fact, wait a minute. Did I put them in already? Sorry, I'm checking. No, I haven't. I'll put in all the pictures of all the paintings that I've done that you guys all commissioned. A lot of people bought a lot of the original Frightened Rabbit paintings that were left over for the book. I won't show them because they're obviously gone now and there's 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 so many. But I'll show you all the commissioned paintings I've done, which helped. Because Sarah and I, are, we're pretty good with money. We have savings and all that sort of stuff. But during this whole time, I still had to, obviously, you still have to pay house bills and cars and whatever else. But I still had to make all the payments for my shop for like three months pretty much that wasn't open and um, so you guys helped me be able to spend up upwards of nine or ten hours a day every day give or take at the hospital with my wife being where i should that's jolene snoring i think it might be jojo actually uh, it might be lumen but you guys helped me be able to do that so for that i'm, I'm really really thankful and uh grant my friend who was a drummer in Frightened Rabbit, who's now the drummer for the Twilight Sad, he ran a competition by where I done, he done, it was three pound to enter, and the winner got chosen at random, and I done a Frightened Rabbit painting, and the rest of the band signed the painting. So I'll show you the painting I done, and then Grant gave me the money that, that he raised through that as well, which really helped as well. So it's just been everybody's i mean there's people been reaching out from all over the world that i've never met and i'm never likely to meet and you know it's just been overwhelming most of the time to be quite honest so as scott would say good cunts hi uh, as scott would say and did say in the past before he left good cunts so these are all good cunts i really do appreciate it so that's been our journey and um, which is not finished yet but that's that's what happened in some some sort of form of detail all right so thank you very much for watching again i'm sorry if you got a fright but that's just the way it is so uh i'll see you in the next one for some tattooing all right and and i'll show you your walking all right with our uh, off-roader so thank you very much and i really do appreciate it all right take it easy bye so this is sarah's first walk out back since uh well that's not true we've been out to like the garden centre for a bit in Ikea and whatnot, but this is the first dog walk. So it's no little house on the prairie, but it's what we call Wembley. We used to come here when we were wee kids and play football on the grass. So we called it Wembley, but 
She's doing so well. She's doing so well. How are you feeling? All right. Hi. Sure? Two weeks tomorrow. Two weeks tomorrow since she came home, aye. So uh, thank you for all the well wishes uh, for everybody that's been watching the video. Uh, part two will be up tomorrow. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Say bye.